ever been in the situation where you want the perfect thing to match? For instance, you have the shoes, and, and I mean, these shoes called out to me. I just had to have them, but they're so unusual that you think, I've got to have a bag to match, and you're never going to find a bag to match. So you create it, and I think it's kind of fun to have that challenge because I used the leaves and put the leaves on there and the color and created that whole thing. So when I wear that, people think, wow, I mean, where did she find that? And, of course, you can't find it. You have to make it. So that's really what we're going to do today is those little things that will match. It's kind of a woman thing. Uh, men don't worry about that. If you'll notice, men wear the same pair of shoes with whatever, and they wear the same belt forever and ever. But women can't do that, and we have to have matching purses and matching stuff. For instance, this jacket that I've got on, I got a little carried away, and maybe I do get carried away, but I thought, what kind of shoes am I going to wear with this? So does it not call out to have matching shoes? So I took my felt pen, and I took my clogs, and now we have matching shoes. And that is a lot of fun, because when people see that, they just say, oh, my goodness. So we're going to show you some belts, because I think so often you've got the little black dress that you like and you want to wear it again, but you wore it before, and you don't want it to look exactly the same. So why don't we make some belts that would work? So here is what I'm talking about. So this belt is just kind of a fun thing. It ties, which I think is important, and we've put leather, so it looks rather splishy. You could wear it on your waist, or you could wear it on your hips, and I think it looks really good on the hips. And then there's another little trick. I'll just take this one. There's another little trick because, of course, it could be reversible. If you're going to make it, you might as well make it work both ways. And then you can tie it that way, too. So that works. And probably that's a little wide to wear on your waist, but this one would work on your waist. So let's do that one. And I like the idea of using the fabric for the tie because you can use whatever fabric you want that's soft and drapey. And, of course, it's adjustable, which is always handy. So there is our snazzy little belt that just changes your little black dress or whatever it is that you happen to have on. All right, let's take that one further. And let's say, okay, I started with the belt here. and I just loved that braid. I thought that looks quite fun. So then I thought, well, maybe we should make the jacket to match. So here you are with the same braid. We've used it in the pocket flap. We've used it on the collar. So this is our jean jacket, and not just jean jacket. We've made it many times on the show, and I wear it a lot because it's just such a versatile little jacket. But the whole idea of having the belt to match, I think I'm going to have to take that belt too. Can I have that one? And then we'll show everybody how to do this because it really is not rocket science. It's really fun and fast. So thank you so much. And it's good to see you, Bev. Oh, it's, it's great, great to have to be you here. here. Oh, good. So you're needing a few belts. I am, oh. I, and this is exciting. Well, it is. It's fast, and it's very with it. Um, if you'll notice, that fabric is up there on the top. So we just took that fabric and added a little bit more to it, and here we have a belt. It's perfect. I so love that. So my thought on this was let's then just cut a length of whatever. If you look at this, this actually is a whole, I mean, we've got quite a few belts on that roll. If yes. You want to make, yes. It, make them out of that. So I decided I would use that. But you can cut whatever braid or make a piece of braid out of, fabric or just use a piece of fabric mm -hmm. it doesn't matter and the idea of it matching is kind of good because you can you could look for days to find a matching oh. belt as you know you've probably been there done it been there done that yeah and you cannot and you cannot find it so if you can create it and if it's not got the right colors we can put the right colors or we can paint it or do whatever you need to do to do to make it All right. so okay we're going to cut this and i would say about um two-thirds your waist or your hip or wherever you're going to wear it mm -hmm. because you need enough to sort of tie so All right so cut the length that you think you need. And I decided to put a little bit of piping on it because I thought it just needed a little bit of spark. So it could be just a black and white piping like this that you would actually put along the edge like that. And then when that flips, oh, it gives it such sure. a professional It just edge. kind of finishes it. So mm -hmm. I put a row of piping along both sides. Okay. Then I've got to make a tie. And the tie, again, is really simple because it's just that shape. Mm -hmm. It could be wider or narrower. It could be out of leather. It could be whatever. So we just sew down here and across there. And you turn that so that it's all finished. Mm -hmm. And then on your belt, we're going to say, all right, so here's, here's belt with the piping on it. Now we need to put the tie on it. So that's going to go right sides together, right there, because that will come out like that. Right. But I need to cover all that mess. So let me just put a pin on that. And I probably should put my glasses on here, too, just to make sure I'm getting everything straight. So I put that in there, and I put the lining right on top. 
Oh, and the yeah. lining, of course, could be a fabric that could be the other side of your belt right. if you want, or it you're could be just... You're making two in one here. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to start somewhere in the middle. It's mm -hmm. not a good idea to start on an end because that's where, you know, that's where you've got to trim and clip and whatever. So right. I always start in the middle, mm -hmm. go down here, across the end, down here. And I'm actually following the line of stitching from the piping, so right. I've got a line to go. And I can come around here, around here, and leave probably three or four inches. You know, have you done that before mm -hmm. where you leave one inch and you can't mm -hmm. pull it through? Okay. Okay. So leave a few inches. Right. And then, here we go. This Just is going to be easy to pull. Magic. You can pull this look all through. That. And gently, there we have it. Oh, look at that. So there is your belt with your tie. And we'd pull out those corners, of course. Yes. But isn't that the quickest, easiest thing? That is perfect. So easy. So what I also thought, you know, I'm a bit obsessed with having... There we go, matching things on it. So if I put a few of these little sparkles, it just brings it. So if you look at this one and this one, oh, perfect. if you put a few little sparkles, and these are not uh, rhinestones, they're rhinestuds. And that means they're metal, and they conduct the heat really fast. So all I have to do is zap them. Just zap and it's on. And the glue is on them already, so we'll oh, zap isn't them. Oh, that a magic trick? Let that cool, and then I can put as many of those on as I want. Mm -hmm. So, there's one more trick. All so, right. shall we see the uh, necklace? Yes, let's. And here's our model with the jacket and the necklace to match. Oh, that's absolutely stunning. <laughs> isn't it good? I mean, you can buy jackets, you can buy necklaces, but you can't buy the two together, and that's why we have to make them. So and shall this I just, is chenille? That is chenille. That's oh. that business of so, 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 cut, 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 wash, wash, wash. Sorry about taking your necklace. But let's just show you how quick this is to make because it really is simple. All that I did was cut a shape that would fit your neck out of the felt. In this one I used fleece, but felt is actually better. And I put a little bit of Velcro there so that that can... For the closure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Then all these things. So if you remember about chenille, it's a 45 degree angle that you sew. And you cut everything but the bottom layer. But that made me say, hey, why don't we just cut this bottom layer? And cut right through. You end up with strips. And you end up with strips. You wash those, put them in your dryer, and you get all this sort of fluffy pipe cleanery looking stuff. I love it. So then all I did was just kind of dump this all over. And you can put it wherever. I'm going to hand sew this on. So I can just play around with that. Put it on there. Have some hanging down below if I want. Whatever. And then I took some sequins and sort of dribble those around and before you know it you've got yourself you a necklace have. that looks like this. Oh an exquisite piece. It's just fun. It's just fun it and fast and that's what it's all about. That's right. So thank you for joining us today and hopefully you'll go home and make something. Oh I can't wait to get home. <laughs> that's good. Okay and we're going to dress chairs next. We dress the bodies now we're going to dress chairs. Guests of our show stay at Travel Lodge. Nice rooms, great people. Models provided by Chan International. Number one in personal development training, modeling and acting. kind of seen better days, something like this. You might have got them at a garage sale, or you may just have kept it around because it's such a good old chair. you got to dress it. That's the answer, is what I've told. And I have with me slip, slip covering queen, Karen Erickson. So Hi. this is what you do. Yeah. You dress chairs. That's what I do. Okay, let's, if this is a chair, how am I going to go about dressing it? Well, I think the first thing we need to know is how much yardage we're going to need for this chair. Good idea. So you'll want to get your measuring tape, and you're going to want to measure. Okay, I, I would think you want to measure here. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, sort let's of get... get the length of it. So we would measure yeah. from the front to the back and, and from there. side to side, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we'll come up with an idea of how much yardage we're so going to need for So, for instance, this if chair. this was a full-size chair and I want to cover the whole thing, how yeah, much if you're going to want to cover the whole thing, you would use about four and a half yards of fabric. Okay, but if, as you're going to show me, I think you can cover parts of it and do whatever with it. Right, the seat might take two yards, the back okay. might take a yard and a half. And if it didn't have a yard and a half, I could make it shorter. I, yeah. I sort of am thinking this is looking a lot like a person. There's a lot of variables in this, and this is uh, kind of fun. Yeah, we're going to show how to make a skirt. All right, so this would be the skirt, this would be the pattern. Yeah, we're going to make a pattern. We'll go ahead and lay some fabric on here, and I've taken this fabric and actually 
cut folded it. Folded it in half. And this is what you're saying. Just take a half piece yeah. and lay it over and kind of decide how you want it to look. Right, how long I want it to look. And over here, I'm going to have to make, I cut this piece out because so I'm going to make a dart. a dart. And that'll fit there. And, and then the piece back here is going to come around. And we might have to dart this back here. Because that's going to poke it out. It's going to poke up a little bit. Okay, so I sort of get the general picture. So yeah. now you've got kind of this we've pattern. We've got a whole pattern here. Okay. That we've made. So I think you went ahead and made that. Let me see here. So this is what you did. Yeah. We went ahead and made a piece for the chair seat, which is like a skirt. Yes, like a skirt. Okay. And what I'm thinking here is, of course, you could decide, is there any fabric that doesn't work? Or is there any fabric that is better than others? Or just color. Yeah. Uh, this one we did, we did a green on one side and we did a different pattern on the other side. Perfect. I like this. So we're going to just pull this around here to the back and we made our own covered, button. covered Why buttons not? here. Yeah. And we can just stick that in to match. And put the tie tack at the back. Yeah. Put that in there. Okay. The then you've got, a, you've got a top. So you've got a skirt. Now you've got a blouse. Would this be? Yeah. Okay. Here is a really cool blouse. Okay. And we'll put that on. Okay. And then, and put some beaded fringe on it. So now we've got a whole different looking chair. Oh, I, I like this idea. Okay, you take that one off because I can see that there's more things. I like dishes and I like setting tables in different ways so I can have placemats that match my chairs, that match my blah. Oh, I can just see it. You're just having way too much fun. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, yes. Here is a back of this chair and there's a hole here. Yes. And if we lay full lengths of fabric, the, it Close has a tendency to go through. So okay. we went ahead and we made an undergarment to put on this chair. So undergarments for chairs, yeah. okay. And you've got some hook and loop to hold it because of course this is shaped. So that's why you had to make it to fit. Right, it's smaller in yeah. the bottom yeah. than yeah. it is in the top. So we put that over on the side. It's usually the opposite with people, isn't it? I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right, so how does this go? Okay, the seat one, the seat undergarment is basically put on to help hold the seat cover in place, and we put... And you've done it in flannel so that it actually does kind of hold right, stuff, we'll sticks hold to that. it. So I'm going to pull that around so that will stick. Okay, then I see that you've got another whole set here that you've done similar to that first set. So let's just dress this then. All right, let's go ahead and put the seat on. Okay. And again, it's just exactly the same way. And on this one, we used hook and loop in the back for that to hook. And, and we put this on top. Here is the blouse. Okay. And as soon as you get that on, I'm going to say, now take, let's take that off because, yeah, now I get that yeah, picture. This so. actually was a slipcover for a sofa, and it was done with the leftovers. So your sofa can match, your dining room chairs it's can match. Fine. Okay, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Okay. Let's take that one off because I like the look of this. And this, I would think you've joined the seat and the top together. Is that the deal? Yes. Indeed. So now we have a dress. Could we that be a dress? dress. Okay. Dress on here. And it's kind of a mini dress. It could be a short dress or a long dress. These are knife edge pleats. Okay. Which are very popular in home deck now. Okay. So if I had just made that long, I'd have a long dress. And then yes. So sure. This is such a happy chair now. I mean, this chair is happy, happy. Oh, throw the pillow oh, on. Pillow, yeah, happier, pillow. happier, happier chair. All right. Can we take that one off then? I can, I'm getting it. I'm getting okay, it. Okay. So I'll it. just pull that off. There we go. And then we have this long job. So this has got the sash, the whole business. And this is made out of a lot of leftovers and stash that was okay. in our Well, I would imagine you could have cushions then on your couch yes. that match the, the chairs, that match the placemats, that match the serviettes, that match the... Yes, yes, yes. We're all about matching today. I'm so go ahead and get this tied here in the back. We have a cute little bow. Okay, so that kind of gives some interest at the back of the chair. Well, and the back is what you're going to usually see on that's your true, dining room. Are, yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, throw that cushion or pillow on there. onto the chair. So the, this is what it is all about. You take your chair. Every chair is going to be different, so you can't give me an absolute formula. So you really got to then play with the chair, decide how much you want to cover, measure it, make your little pattern. Start from the basics. Mm -hmm. Start with the skirt. Add on your blouse and then do a full cover. And the undergarments. Yes, and the undergarments <laughs> and the under that hold everything in place. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. want to walk around without your undergarments on. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. So, no, this is going to be lots of fun. So, um, ch if, if I had arms, I'd have to just deal with that separately. I'd have it's to a, make... It's a totally separate piece if okay. you have arms on your chair. Okay, so you'd make that as a separate yeah. thing. 
All right. Well, thank you, Karen. This has been great. Uh, these chairs need not be naked ever again. So That's right. So yeah. Just put a slip cover on. Okay. That's great. Don't you go away because we've got more stuff coming up. good and a paper coat is wonderful but look what else you can do with paper you can make scrapbooks and I've never tried this so I'm quite excited to have somebody that'll show me how to do all of this kind of embroidery work on paper and here's my friend Trevor again so it's great you're you're good at this Hi, Linda. thank oh, you it's good to have you so what do you suggest um, you know with an embroidery machine Linda you can really make anything in scrapbooking and this is where I think you can be really creative and just let the embroidery machine be a lot of fun and make your pho photographs look fantastic. Well I think the interesting thing if you can dream it you can do it obviously Absolutely. on this and then you're the guy that has been doing this for a long time. Yeah thank so you. That's great yeah. <laughs> so what I did was I saved some designs onto a memory card Okay. And what we're going to do is just take this card and put it into the embroidery machine and get ready to do some embroidery on paper. Okay. What I like about machines is that this, this is a regular machine that can do all kinds of stitching that I do all the time, but you can instantly convert it now into an embroidery machine. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, show me how that just, works. Okay. So right now we're in the um, sort of regular ordinary stitching mode. Yeah. So we'll just choose to switch to embroidery, but before we do, we need to release the carriage arm in the back of the machine, and it's just a little lever here. Okay. And so what happens is this arm opens up, and that's what'll hold our embroidery hoop. And now we can go ahead and change it to embroidery mode. And every time you embroider, you've got to have a hoop. This is that's right. We're going to okay. put our design yeah. in an okay. embroidery hoop. Okay. And so then. Um, I put the card into the machine, okay. and now that the card's in the machine, we can choose to see the designs on our card. Okay, because there's 50 million cards and 50 million designs. Many, many designs. So we can choose from sort of many different sources, a memory card or a USB memory stick sure, or a sure. CD-ROM, and I've placed the designs on this card, and they're in this folder. And so what we have here is a um, little stork, and this is a photo frame, and it's a cloud. So okay. what we'll do is we'll just choose that. All right. So now the machine is ready to stitch this design, and it tells us that this design has 2,467 stitches. With any luck, I guess that's right. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> no, pretty specific. Okay, yeah. It's going to take seven minutes to sew. Okay. And it's about 70 millimeters by 85 millimeters wide. Okay, okay. So now that the machine's ready to start sewing, what we have to do is put some paper into a hoop. I mean, this could have been fabric, it could have been whatever, but we're doing scrapbooking, so we're going to paper. Exactly. We're okay. going to sew on paper this time. Okay. And the thing with sewing on paper is if you sew just on regular sort of paper that you would write on, um, the embroidery might perforate the paper. Oh, I would think. Yeah, yeah. so you've got to have some heavy paper. Exactly. But then and how so do you put the heavy paper in the hoop? What I have here is some fibrous paper that works well for scrapbooking. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is we've hooped some peel and stick stabilizer. So this has got stabilizer that's sticky. Okay, there's a piece right here that you showed me so that this there's is a, two pieces together. This is the sticky part. Right. You, you, so you peel off. So what we did was we scored the paper and peeled off the waxy side and sure. left the sticky paper. Yeah, and so you can stick stuff to it yeah. because you can't put that in your hoop, obviously. Exactly, yeah. and so what we'll do is we'll just stick the paper down in that hoop okay. like that, and that'll okay. hold it in place. So it's like hooping for the unhoopable. Okay, all right, all right. Now what we do is we put the embroidery hoop onto the embroidery machine. Okay. And we attach it to the arm. And that's it. We're ready to go. Our thread is in place. And uh, so just a minute, what kind of thread? So we've got white embroidery thread. Okay, so this... 40s weight sure. embroidery okay. thread, sort of regular embroidery mm -hmm. thread. Any special needle? Um, just a regular sort of four, number 14 using? embroidery okay. needle, yeah. yeah. It has to be an embroidery needle. 
It's um, just a number 14 needle. Okay. It's not good. a special needle. Okay, no. good. The one I was using then. The same needle you were straight stitching okay. with. That's okay. right. Okay. Uh, but we did change the foot. Okay. To, yes. To a um, embroidery foot. Embroidery foot. And now you can start that. And, and we, we push can... start and then we can go and talk a little bit more about it. And it knows oh, where to lower go. Lower the presser foot. Oh, that's it. And push start. And it knows where to start and it knows what to do. It just starts and now it's going to embroider our design onto the paper. Okay, I like this. I think I'll let it do that okay. while we come over here. Sounds great. I'll okay. follow you. All right. I like multitasking and that's a good way to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, okay. And we can hear if it's oh, yeah. having any troubles. Yeah. yeah. So this is what we're going to actually end up with. Absolutely. This is what the finished design will look like okay. when it's done. And um, so this has been sewn on paper. And what we would do after it's finished is we would just tear out the inside of the cloud. Okay. So, yeah, I can see you've got to be a little bit careful yeah. with that. Yeah. It's a little bit delicate, yeah, but yeah. not too bad. And yeah. so we'll tear out the inside. But you've actually got one done. So let's actually look right. at that. Right. So that's so. what it's going to finish up like. And, and the paper tears nicely. Can, so, so you, you can, can create any shape you want. So you can around it. Exactly. All right, so now let's make the page of your okay. book. Okay. So a little bit more of the same paper. Mm -hmm. And these are all supplies that you're going to find in your regular scrapbook store. So let's just put that one. Oh, this one's going to go on top of it. Something yes. like okay. that looks okay. nice. Okay, sure. so let's just keep, keep so going let's here. See, so let's see, this is a picture, and actually these photographs. Are your new baby. My <laughs> new baby, Reese. Yes. He's just eight weeks old. Okay, so let's... So this one has been stitched onto felt and then trimmed away afterwards. Okay, so this gives nice texture to the so whole thing. So you can so stitch, yeah. you can incorporate fabric into your scrapbooking not this just looks like a fun one too and this is again one of the collection yeah this is the scrapbook embroidery collection and there's several hundred designs to choose from and all different themes for holiday or wedding anniversary or special occasions and you can also incorporate whoops i lost my stickers well actually you could buy a whole bunch the, of this kind of stuff can't you yeah the doodads yeah, yeah, yeah. so what you can do is bring in any of those little doodads okay this is great i think i'm getting it i think i'm getting it thank you trevor you're welcome and thank you for watching today and catch us next time on Linda McKee's Workshop. To receive the companion book for this series with all of the project details, send 1998 to the address on your screen or call 1-888-McPhee or visit us on the web at www.mcpheeworkshop.com. Sponsored in part by Janome, quality sewing machines since 1921. And by Rowenta. The Garment Care Experts, meeting the needs of the sewing enthusiasts for over 100 years with high-performance irons, steamers, steam generators, and ironing boards. And Wonderfill Specialty Threads. Thread for the way you sew. And by The Woolen Mill Store, your source for quality fabrics and more. Featuring the largest selection of wool and wool blend. Yardage from Pendleton Woolen Mills. And by Horn of America. Experience quality, innovative ideas, and customer service. And Creative Festival. Bursting at the seams with hundreds of industry experts, conference classes, exhibits, and more. Experience creativity in the making.